that depends on who gratitude it's a perfect way of telling someone maybe your mom that you're thinking about her oh no they're not for my mom they're for a girl yeah okay go with red nothing says i love you like a dozen red roses the thing is she's not exactly my girlfriend so saying i love you might be a little too much there's always yellow i mean technically it's a sign of friendship but who gives their friends roses yeah that sounds good she'll get the point okay good brady a dozen yellow please i'm on it all right so that would be 49.99 plus oh oh i only have 20. brady hold up on that dozen i'll tell you what i will give you one red rose on the house under one condition you promise me that you tell her how you really feel really really i promise okay bye bye and good luck closing the mansions today so there is only one rule on one wednesday Lou. but if we must i will say the market is very hot right now and your girl is killing it wow look mm -hmm. at you <laughs> this isn't good for me too but if there was ever a time that i would expand it would be now okay enough about work we have far more interesting topics to discuss like what friday night what about it do you have plans well, for a florist, Friday is not about fun. <laughs> it's about work, right? Whatever you need to tell yourself. Anyway, me, on the other hand, my night will be filled with budding romance and passion. Whoa. <laughs> Who's the lucky guy? Brady. Like, my Brady? Mm -hmm. From work Brady? Mm -hmm. No. You're going to ask him now? Not yet, but I will. Oh, wish I had thought of that. <laughs> He's too cute to ask out. He's so cute. Who just called me? Was it Hannah? How'd you know? I have my sources. She just asked me on a date. As friends? That sounds interesting. Are you gonna say yes? I think I just did. That sounds very excited. Yeah, well, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Hi. Hey there. Michael, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, I was in the neighborhood and I. I figured I'd stop by my favorite flower shop. And I really like what you've done with the place, Josie. Still got this old thing, huh? What are you doing here? Told you. 
I was in the neighborhood and it occurred to me I needed some flowers. You really expect me to believe that? <laughs> okay. I guess there was one other minor reason, but it's not something I can just come out and say. I don't think it would be appropriate. Well, what is it? You're making me nervous. No, it's not that. It's just... I was thinking dinner. Huh? We can discuss the matter over a well-cooked meal. How's tomorrow look for you? That's Saturday. You're missing the point. Oh, okay. Dinner's too much. How about we pencil in... No. You cannot just waltz in here out of the blue. I haven't seen you in years. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have just shown up like this, but... If I had called first, you would have said no. Truth is, there is something we need to discuss. It's important. It better be. Isn't it obvious? No, it's not. Your ex-husband randomly appears and asks you to dinner. He obviously wants to rekindle an old show. <coughs> Are you okay? I'm sorry. I thought that you were suggesting that he's maybe interested. Ugh, Hannah. What? Just gross. Why is that gross? Because first of all, he's married, and second of all, it's Michael. Whom you haven't spoken to in three years. You don't know if he's still married. More importantly, if he's even the same Michael. I appreciate your optimism, but... But? But people don't change like that. I mean, especially men. Women, too, but... Especially men. Come on. Well, I mean, you can you strokes up your golf game, but who you are deep down inside, that doesn't change. It's just how they are. Anyway, I'm going to find out tomorrow morning. Agreed to meet him for breakfast. Hmm. So tell me, how have you been? Oh, you know. Actually, no, I don't. Listen, Michael, can we just skip the pleasantries? I was up all night trying to conjure up why you're here, and I can't think of one. Same old Josie, I was worrying about something. And same old Mike, completely oblivious. There's some baggage. I get it. But honestly, I'm not here as your ex. I'm here as your business partner. Silent business partner. And I've been good about that, but at this point... As your partner, I feel like I have a responsibility to come forward. Is something wrong? No. Actually, quite the opposite. The business is healthy. Really healthy. Well, yeah, we do all right. Come on, give yourself more credit than that. You do more than all right. Well, yeah, the flowers are beautiful. I'll take credit for that, but we're not making millions. Not yet. So that's why you're here? It's time to break through. Do you not want to expand? No, I do. Badly. What? Are you just going to pretend that we weren't married? I mean, how does your wife feel about us working together? Something wrong? No. Um, Laura and I are, uh, we're not together anymore. Oh my God, you got a divorce. We're separated. She's been acting strange lately. Look, there is no reason Josie's can't be a national brand. So let's put the past behind us. Consider your future. Oh, ow. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Is it that obvious? No, not really. 
Let's have a sixth sense for when someone needs a cocktail. Mm. Yeah, well, it's been a long few weeks. Relationship issues. How'd you know? Well, someone like you, alone? It's not just that. It's my business partner. He died. Sorry to hear that. May I ask how? He was murdered. The police think it's bad luck, but our office was broken into several times before. It was midnight, so whoever it was, wasn't expecting Dennis. Oh, that's crazy. Again, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. Where's your boyfriend? It's complicated. Well, my advice. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Let him go. He's obviously not very wise. You're here all alone. Honey, you are so sweet. But you have absolutely no idea. Educate me. After four years of marriage, all the memories, good and bad, there is no such thing as letting go. Sorry to hear that. But you look at the silver lining, you leave him, you get half. <laughs> What's that? Honey, why would I settle for half when I could have it all? Okay. to expand Josie's, maybe open up some locations, maybe some other stuff. That's amazing. Well, I'm going in on Monday morning and I'm turning down his offer. Why? Because it's weird. He's my ex-husband. You've been dying to expand. Okay, what happened between you two? Was it really that bad? No, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, it was good for a while, but... He just cared about his career, and we fought all the time, and there was tension, and we didn't want to be around each other. Just drifted apart. Okay, I can see how that would take its toll on a marriage, but isn't that like the best possible business relationship? I don't know. There's no guarantee that it would work. Michael seems to think that it would. What does he know? Just because he's obsessed with work doesn't mean he's any good at it. You never know. He may be like a genius entrepreneur now. <laughs> yeah, I'll believe him when I see him. <laughs> yeah. There's just someone in the backyard. Is this not his office? I'm sorry, I don't know Michael. Michael Robertson? I think this, he used to work here. Oh, Mr. Robertson. He doesn't work here anymore. Well, not in his office. What, can you tell me where I can find him? He's on the top floor. Thanks. Well, I don't care what John says. You go back to him and you tell him MPG's quarterly earnings don't even compare to... I'll, uh, I'll call you back. Joe, I wasn't expecting you. Is this your office? Yeah. Woo! It is incredible. Last time I knew it, you were an analyst. And now you're... CEO. Three years can be a long time. 
Yeah, but not that long. Come on, Michael, that's incredible. So what's up? I came to talk about your proposal. Listen, I appreciate everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold on, hold on. Here, have a seat. Before you say anything, let me just ask you one question. You know that painting in your office, of the vineyard? Sure, what about it? When I first met you, it was already hanging above your bed. Yeah, I've had it forever. My grandmother painted it for me when I was a kid. Yeah. And living on a vineyard has been your dream ever since. We used to talk about that every day. Back when that dream couldn't have been further away. So my question for you is, is that still your dream? Yeah, of course. Well, listen to me, Joe. If you trust me on this, that dream, the vineyard, it will become a reality. I promise you that. So what's it going to be? Yes or no? Fantastic. But under two conditions. Whatever you say. Number one, I retain full decision-making power. Naturally. And two, this relationship is exclusively business and nothing more. Okay. And that's not negotiable. I'll have the lawyers drive a contract and we'll be ready for your signature in the morning. He won't be here long. Okay. Well? She owns a flower shop in the valley. Mm-hmm. Here's a shot of her leaving Michael's office. What's that? Could be a business thing, or like, or maybe it could be, um... Business? Does this look like a business thing to you? Uh, well, is this all you have? Or, but uh, she she picked up on me. You're not very good at your job, are you? Okay, you know what? Let me see this. Oh, this is great. Hmm? What am I supposed to do with this? Hmm? What am I supposed to do with a picture of Josie and her friend drinking wine? No, just leave. You wanted evidence of infidelity for your settlement. Now. Jack, can I have another drink, please? Last night. Yeah, Hannah's great. It's fun. Not that fun. Gosh, she tells you everything, doesn't she? Look, I like Hannah, just not like that. I understand. You don't have to explain. Mm-hmm. But she can be a little aggressive, I know, but she's an amazing person. Curious. Hannah's a great person. I get that. That's not the reason I didn't kiss her. Really. What I'm trying to tell you is you're the reason I didn't kiss her. What do you mean? You're not like you, Josie. I have feelings for you, not for him. Oh, think about it. I know what you're going to order for dinner before you do. I know what music you play when you're in a bad mood. Nobody knows you as well as I do. Okay, Brady. Tell me I'm wrong. What about Hannah? I mean, she likes you too. She's a good friend of mine. I didn't ask Hannah to like me. No, that doesn't matter. Sure it does. I've been holding on to this for a long time. She likes me for, what, all of a week? Now that doesn't count? No, that's not the point. You know, I can't betray her, and, and we work together. That's complicated. Hi. Um, what can I help you with today?
us what happened to me last night. What's that? I was leaving work, and out of nowhere, a car started following me. You sure wasn't just going the same direction? No, off. And then I had to run away to lose them. My God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just weird, you know? Just the minute that you come back into my life, this all started. <laughs> I know it's weird. I'm, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. But what would someone want with us? Think I should call the police? I mean, sure, if it'll make you feel better. Okay, so sign here, here, and here. It's official. First things first, we'll sit down this week and we'll hash out a business plan. Okay. And then on Thursday morning, I scheduled a pitch with a high-powered investor named John Miller. Thursday. <laughs> we got to will this thing into existence. No one said it was going to be easy. I know. I mean, Thursday, that's a little crazy. A little crazy can be a good thing. Uh... Do you remember when you quit your job at Tees to sell bouquets? That was a disaster. And I've never been so humiliated in my whole life. I specifically recall one time in Newberry, you going, picking flowers from the front yard, selling them to the owner. I mean, I knew that he would like them. <laughs> That's not crazy, is it? It's completely insane. Well, I was desperate and so dumb. Yeah. I mean, we both were. I know. God, I miss those days. I missed you too. Oh, uh, I'm supposed to meet Hannah for lunch. I'm late. Look, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. No, um, it's fine. But uh, I'm just going to call you and then let's just touch base tomorrow about starting the business plan. Sure. Why do you have this? Because it was stabbed into my front ears, were slashed, and left this behind. Wait, you're serious? Did she do this? Michael? Joe, I'll, I'll pay for it. I don't care about my car. I want to know. What have I gotten myself into? Look, I told you she's been acting strange. I can see that. Look, I'm sorry. But I will take care of this. Trust me, she will not become a problem. But she already is one. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say about it. You could tell me what's going on between the two of you. This is so weird. I know. No, not that. First someone is looking into my window, then someone's following me, and now this, it's like the universe is telling me that this is a bad idea. Oh, that's all in your head. I don't think so. The joke. You want to know how I really became CEO? I uncovered the secret to success and I learned to recognize it in other people. It's as simple as that. Well, what is it? The secret. It's grit. Not IQ, not good looks. Grit. Determination. Persistence, force of will. I don't care, flowers. If grit is in the equation, that business will be a success. And that is why I was interested in Josie's. Because I have grit. I know you do. And having grit means not giving up no matter what. That's crazy, right? He said he missed you? Oh, that's what you think is crazy? I was right. Huh? That's the reason he came back. No, he didn't mean it. Like, like he apologized and everything. Because every time someone apologizes, they really mean it. 
Well, do you miss him back? Well, Anna, he's sick. If he wasn't married, would you miss him? Yes, of course. Part of me misses him. The part of me that loved him and was let down by him. And that part doesn't get a say anymore. Oh, that looks yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Back up and bit, so. Good morning. Hey, guys. You know, you never told me that your business partner is also your ex-husband. Oh, yeah. Did I forget to mention that? You ready? Sure. Okay, what does this have to do with flowers? Oh, nothing. I just needed a coffee. <laughs> nah, it's just... I thought we should get out, get some fresh air, get the creative juices flowing. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. What happened between you and Laura? I mean, I know you don't want to talk about it, but I think I should know, considering we're spending so much time together. Look, the truth is, Laura's not well. A couple years back, she started acting erratically. Took her to the hospital, ran some tests. Turns out it was mental illness. We thought it was schizophrenia, but the truth is, Nobody really knows. So sorry. Yeah, I tried to get her help, be there for her, but she started acting violent. What do you mean, violent? Look, Laura owns a business. Her partner, Dennis, wasn't pulling his own weight, and the business was suffering for it, I think. Her resentment of him turned into a complete delusion. A few weeks ago, he turned up dead. His throat was cut with a scalpel. Oh, my God. The police said the evidence is circumstantial, but I believe Laura did it. That's so scary. I can't believe they let her go. She's behind this, isn't she? What do you mean? Well, we know that she slashed my tires, but maybe she's stalking me, too. Let's hope not. I think we should go to the police. No, no, like I said, she needs help. I'm on it. You, you focus on Josie's. What? What is it? I have an idea. Something that I can create that no one else can. Go on. What if we created an online platform that Taylor makes a bouquet for any situation, no matter how specific? See, flowers have this untapped potential for compassionate communication. Like, for instance, uh, roses are synonymous with Valentine's Day. But what if the 14th comes around? And you're not in love. What do you get your crush or your best friend or your ex-husband without sending the wrong message? I don't know. Well, you're not alone. But there's hope. So at Josie's, I am teaching people about flowers' limitless possibilities, but also making buying flowers more interactive and fun. It's what I strive to do, and I would be thrilled if you joined me. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Here, take a rose. Are you sure? You did great, so stop worrying. But John didn't seem impressed. That's just how he is. Regardless of the pitch, he always has that same judgmental look on his face. Makes him a deadly poker player. <laughs> I heard this one time in Vegas. Michael. Yeah, yeah, put him through. Hey, John. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, thanks. Well, we got the money. We got it. Yes, yes. <laughs> What did he say? He said he really likes the idea, but what sold him is your passion for it. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I know. Thank you so much. Let's celebrate. Yes. Oh, I don't drink scotch. <laughs> sure. Uh, a little superstitious, but it's become a tradition. You know, pour a little some for me, too. I'll just cheers with you. Yeah? Mm-hmm.
the vineyard. So, so what if? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, you first. Um, I was thinking that since we make such great business partners and it's been so great working together that, um, <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is that, um, Josie, do you want to go out on a date with me? Michael. Just hear me out. What about our ground rules? I don't care about our ground rules. Well, I do. And we've already tried this once and it didn't work out. Why would we go down that road when we already know where it leads? Because I'm not the same person that I was before. I was young and immature and lacked perspective, but I know what's important in life now. That's not the job or money. It, it's... I know you believe that now, but what happens when you get comfortable and the infatuation fades away? Michael? It's... The infatuation road that we would be. Like. Michael. Michael. Oh, someone call nine one one. We ran a toxicology report and it came back positive for ketamine. Ketamine. Yes, and a copious amount of it too. Sir, have you been experimenting with exotic drugs? Absolutely not. I, I don't even know what that is. Well, ketamine is a powerful disassociative. Medically, it's most commonly used as an anesthetic or for pain management. Or in the veterinary field, it's commonly used as a powerful horse tranquilizer. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know, but thank you for your help. Ketamine? Michael, are you using drugs? Are you serious? I don't know. You don't just stub your toe on a syringe of horse tranquilizers. No, I'm not. After four years of marriage and a divorce, you better believe I can tell when you're lying. And this is serious. There is no way that this is a coincidence. Are you in trouble? You better tell me what's going on or I am done. Look, Joe. Because I don't need the money. I will All right, all right. All right. Fine. It's Laura. She must have spiked my scotch. Laura. She's a vet. And that explains the horse tranquilizer. I told you, I knew that she was behind this. And I didn't want to see it. She's not taking well to the divorce. She probably... Probably what? I'm just going to say it. I think she's trying to kill me. Kill you? Why would she try to kill you? I told you she's not stable. Unstable? That is completely insane. We have to go to the police. No, no, we are not. We are not going to the police. Well, we don't have a choice. What if she succeeds, huh? What if something happens to you? We can't take that chance. Look, she's going through a rough time. She may be mentally ill, but she's still my wife. And I still... Well, it's not love, but I, I, I don't want to see her go to jail. She needs help. What if something happens to you? I'm worried. I will take care of it. I promise. Just please do not get involved. I told you she's dangerous and I don't want to see you dragged into any of this. Laura will be right in. Thank you. I heard you have some questions about your poodle. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. How dare you? How dare I? How dare you enter my place of business while you're running around with my husband? We're business partners. <laughs> and I'm here because this is getting out of hand. I understand that you're going through divorce and that is hard and that you're struggling, but you have to stop before somebody gets hurt. Stop what? Oh, don't dumb. The ketamine. You tried to kill him. 
And this ends now or else I'm going to the police. I have no idea what you're talking about. I just want to say we can help. The care you need, it's out there. Okay, he's manipulating you. Look, when I discovered Michael was cheating on me, I got so mad. I. The point is, I've done some things I regret. But I would never hurt Michael. I loved him. Michael cheated on you? Whatever you're going through, I'm sorry. But don't act so surprised. You were married to him, too. You know what he's capable of. What are you talking about? He's uncompromising, completely ruthless. That's why I was attracted to him in the first place. But I knew when I filed for divorce that this would be a battle. Wait, Michael filed for divorce because of your breakdown. Excuse me, do I look crazy to you? I operate the most successful vet clinic in LA. Oh, you poor thing. I don't believe you. Listen, after I broke into Michael's house, I regained my composure. I've been doing everything by the books. I've hired lawyers. Hell, I even hired a private detective. Unfortunately, even I didn't think Michael would stoop back down to you. <laughs> so stupid because he's really made it quite easy for me. To answer your question, no, I didn't poison Michael. And that's all there is to know. Now, please, get out of my clinic before I escort you out myself. something happened? You could say that. Are you okay? You've been lying to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Just tell me what happened. I spoke with Laura. You spoke to Laura? Jo Josie, I told you not to do that. She's, she's dangerous. She didn't seem dangerous to me. And she didn't seem unstable. In fact, she seemed quite well-spoken. And she told me all about the divorce and about your infidelity and about her breakdown, which never happened. Josie, she's lying to you. Why did you drag me into this? Drag you into what? And you're just using me. What? Why? Why are you using me? Listen to yourself. You're not making any sense. What would I possibly have to gain by dragging you into this mess? I mean, if anything, the fact that we're spending so much time together only hurts my case. So there is a case. Of course there's a case. You've gone through a divorce. You know there's always a case. Well, Laura said... Laura just tried to kill me. I, I can't believe we're even having this conversation. Joe, I am only here because I care about you and I care about Josie's. I want it to succeed. But do you really? Come with me. doubts you have, 
whatever apprehensions you have, they're not justified. Laura is manipulating you. And she's exploiting those doubts, trying to drive us apart. Don't put this on me. I'm not, but you shouldn't have gone to Laura because now you're a target too. I'm not trying to be a, a jerk about this. The divorce took its toll on me too, but if we don't put this behind us, then this is nuts. I don't know, Michael. I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm not the same person you once knew, Josie. And whatever I have to do to prove that to you, I will do it. someone to talk to. Okay. Can we just meet? Okay, I'll be right there. You want my honest opinion? Yes. Fully knowing that my honesty may not be the answer you're looking for. Just do it. Okay. I think he's right. I think there's no reason that you shouldn't trust him. Objectively, he's been nothing but amazing to you. I mean, you really think so? Michael, you tend to believe the bad before you see the good. Well, can you blame me? That's not my fault. Really, really want honesty? Yes. You know, love is a two-way street, and maybe there's a reason you spent all day working. Ouch. I'm sorry, two thirds. Right, well, that's enough truth for today. <laughs> I still love you. I know you do. Thank you very much. <laughs> The TV and the stereo, everything. Hello? Hello? Do you think it was that guy in the backyard? I don't know. Oh. I don't think it was the peeping Tom. I think it was Laura. really scary. I wish I could do more for you. Being here is enough. Listen, I'm really sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. No, no, I'm sorry that I made things really awkward between us. Oh. <laughs> you think that things could just go back to the way they were before? I'm probably not. don't know how I feel. How are we going to work together? Maybe we can't. Really? You wouldn't just throw it all away. I don't want to just be friends, Josie. Oh, Michael? No, of course not. Listen, if, if this is it between us, then I need to tell you everything. I don't think he's right for you. What makes you say that? I don't trust him. Maybe you say that because you're jealous of him. Maybe. Uh, maybe it's... Maybe it's because I know that you and I are right for each other and you don't have anything in common with him. You're making a huge mistake.
Where are you going? The kitchen. <laughs> Showing it this weekend sounds great. The sooner we can get this sold, the better. All right. Thanks for getting to Yeah, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. Talk soon. It's going to be great. Yeah, can I get Jeff Silverman on the phone, please? Who was that? I gotta go. Hannah, how many times have we talked about you barging into my office? Not now, Richard. What is it? Who was that? In the meeting? It's a client. <laughs> Michael Robertson? His house. He's got this impeccable lot up in the house. Who's the um, sales agent? No one yet. If anyone gets that listing, it should be me. You know that, right? Damn. Who sold the Hudson lot in less than two weeks? Or the craftsman on the west side? Do you really think that Matthew could have sold it that fast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here are the keys. Choose if you want it. Thank you, Rich. Oh, and Hannah? Yeah. About that house, it needs to be sold as soon as possible. Okay. Not two weeks fast, faster. You said it has to go immediately. Of course. Hey, what's up? You'll never guess who I just saw at the office. Who? Michael. Michael? Yeah, he's listing his house. Did you know he was in the market? No. I had no idea. Yeah, well, apparently he is, and he wants... Yeah, no, he never mentioned that to me. Well, maybe he does have a secret. What if Laura's right? Maybe she did file for a divorce. Now he's trying to liquidate his assets. Or maybe trying to hide it or leave L.A. entirely. I don't know what to believe. Yeah, me neither. But I know how we can find out. I bet it's all on his computer. Well, what are you going to do, break into his house? <laughs> of course not. But if he wants his house sold, like, tomorrow, then I have to do walk through, like, uh, today. Well, Hannah, don't get yourself in trouble. I won't. I already got clearance from Richard. Apparently, Michael has a meeting, so I can do it then. Okay. Thanks.
Hello? I just got back from dinner. It's Laura. I think she's inside, but please open the door. I think she's in trouble. that she'd kill me. And then she found Hannah in his house. And... So it was a mistake? Laura thought Hannah was you? Michael, why was Laura at your house in the first place? This wasn't the first time she broke into my house. See, Laura and I have been going through a, a rough divorce and the process has made her well, for lack of a better term, unhinged. I think she broke in fully intending to kill me and took advantage of the opportunity to kill who she thought was Josie because she knows how I feel about Josie. What do you mean by that? I mean, throughout our marriage, Josie has always been a touchy subject. Laura is a very jealous person. Jealous enough to kill? Apparently. Have you found her yet? We've looked at her house, we've checked with our co-workers, we've checked everywhere we can think of. 
We have our best men and women working around the clock to try to track her down. I can assign one of our officers to your house if you want. Or you're free to go out of town if it'll give you some peace of mind. Just keep your phones close and don't hesitate to call. I know a place. secret that you're selling your house. Michael, I want to believe you, that you've changed. I want to try this, but I know that you're lying to me. I just can't figure out why. Are you liquidating your ass? No, I am not. Why are you selling your house? I didn't just sell my house sold everything. Joe, I stepped down as CEO. What? Why? I'll show you. Where are we? It was supposed to be a surprise. At least a happy one. What do you mean? CEO of my company. I do my research. So these grapes are Cabernet Sauvignon. World. And California is known to make some of the best. I've been talking to a lot of the most widely respected winemakers in California. My goal is to make a premium Cabernet. This is a reason for consolidating your assets. It's a very expensive endeavor. But it's worth every dollar I have to show you I mean what I say. And here's the best part. Incorporated into the tasting room will be a flower shop. I think it'll make a great headquarters. How does Dahlia Vineyard sound to you? It's your favorite flower. I like it. Yeah? Michael, this is completely insanely crazy well you know how i feel about crazy sometimes it's a good thing it's just like i've always pictured it well i know the timing's off and i wish you could enjoy it more but hopefully it'll make you feel better charming and what the I had my assistant bring it up I want this to be the place of your dreams our dreams why don't you go find the perfect place for it I'll go get some groceries okay. yeah Ah. 
you get a good workout? Yeah, these groceries are no joke. You want some help with those? No. Relax. There you go. Thanks. You can have one? Of course. To the vineyard. To the vineyard. Joe, um, I do have a secret, and I want to tell you the truth. You showed me that Josie's is more than just a flower shop, that it has amazing potential, but that first day I showed up, it wasn't about business. Then why did you come? I came for you, Josie. I missed you. Michael. And I still love you. This one's in the house. Come on, come on. What are you doing? Stay in here and keep this door locked. Where? Listen to me. Just calm down. We can work this out. I still care about you. Just put down the gun. Put down the... No! Josie's and make it work. All you have to do is tell him what happened. The vineyard. Everything we've ever dreamed about. They can be ours. Just tell him the truth. And what is the truth? She had a gun. But I don't know whether it was the look in her eye or... She was going to shoot. Okay, so then what happened? After she missed, I jumped at her. I wrestled her to the ground. I took the gun from her. And... I'm so sorry. Here, everything is going to be okay. Falling, and then some groaning, and then the gunshot. I thought that she had killed Michael. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Josie, do you think it's possible that Michael wanted to kill Laura? Are you implying that he did it on purpose? I don't know either way. All I'm saying is that they were going through a divorce. So I have to explore the possibility that he took advantage of the opportunity. Detective, let's get one thing straight. And she attempted to kill Michael on multiple occasions. And how did he respond? He didn't even call the police because he cared about her and he believed that she could get better. And so I think it is fair to say that when Michael shot Laura, it was the last thing in the world he wanted to do. So that was the second time he shot? What do you mean? You're telling me that Michael shot Laura, but only in the leg, then she attacked him, and then that was the second time he shot her. He shot her once. That was the first time he shot her, the only time. Josie Laura was shot twice. No, there must be some mistake. Laura had the gun, 
and she shot at Michael and she missed. And then he took the gun from her. We can take a walk to the morgue if you'd like. Laura was shot twice. Once in the leg and once in the chest. The body proves it. Hey. Can I go? Fine. Just fine? Well, I was thinking we could go back to the vineyard. Try again at that dinner? What do you think? Chelsea? Yo, dinner sounds great. Um, why don't I meet you there tonight? I just gotta stop by the shop first. Great. I'll see you then. Bye. Anybody here? Hello? Timing is perfect. There you go. Is this from the vineyard? Yeah, it is. How do you like it? It's smooth and dry. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, apparently 
All the coastal air settles here in this valley. It's a little colder than LA, but paradise for the grapes. I can tell. Oh. Hey, Michael. Yes? Can you run me through what happened when you shot Laura just one more time? <sighs> Is that really what you want to talk about over a nice glass of wine? No, I just feel like we should have our story straight, you know, for Detective Baker. Relax, I'm sure you did great. All right, fine. But please, can we talk about something afterwards? I'm not sure I want to keep reliving and killing my wife. Sorry, I promise. bedroom i found laura I, I wrestled it away from her and well uh, you know but um look she's gone now we don't have to worry about her anymore or the divorce i'm a free man now you sure about that yeah Pretty sure. No, are you sure you have your story straight? Of course I am. Did you shoot her once or twice? What are you talking about? Just answer the question. Twice. But I had to. She was trying to kill me. That's not what you told me. You told me you shot her once. No, I didn't. After it happened, you told me that she took a shot at you, and she missed, and then you shot her. Joe, it all happened so quickly. I don't think you're remembering this correctly. Stop lying, Michael. Just tell the truth. Why was Lori here in the first place? You know why she was here. She followed us here. Because she was... Insane. Yeah. Maybe you're the one that's insane. Maybe you're a pathological liar. This is ridiculous. After everything I've done for you, I bought you a vineyard for crying out loud. Crazy. You know, the last thing that Hannah said to me, I finally realized what it meant. She yelled Laura, not because Laura was attacking her, but because she found her bound and gagged in your house. Why did you kill my friend? Don't move. that's happened has just been to turn me against Laura. She's never the villain. She just wanted a divorce. It was all... Something so crazy. You knew that she would get everything. So they... So you killed her and made it look like you were the victim. You just needed my testimony. My only question is why me? I had the perfect plan. Kill Laura's business partner and frame her for it. But that didn't work. So I asked myself, what was I missing? The answer was you, Joe. I needed an eyewitness, and you were the perfect candidate. How could you? When we split, I had nothing. So I put my head down, and I worked as hard as I could to get where I am. And what did Laura do, huh? She was a successful vet. <sighs> and who do you think gave her the money to start that clinic? That didn't mean she deserved to die. Listen, Joe. I did fall in love with you all over again. The vineyard, 
It was never a part of the plan. Intended to stay here. You were always going to disappear. Actually, I'm finishing up a special order for you. Who is a florist a bouquet? That would be your investor friend. John Miller? Bovers, morals, Canterbury Bells. So industry, success, gratitude, which all together means... He's a big fan of yours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Well, why wouldn't he be after all you've done for him? Speaking of all you've done, why don't you let me take you out to celebrate all the progress you made? Are you asking me out on a date? Hey, you're back. How'd it go? I need some more flowers. A lot more flowers. Brady, a dozen red roses, please. I want it. Great, thanks. Wow. So congratulations. Thank you. Sounds like things went well. The red rose was perfect. She fell in love with it. Oh, fantastic. It's all thanks to you. 